Hi, this video is about the build of a vertical 5 8 wave antenna for 10 meters. It's based on an article where somebody reverse engineered a Serio Gain Master 5 8 CB antenna. Uh, in this variation, I've uh, adapted the measurements for 10 meters and I've also included what I believe is a, a better choke. I hope you enjoy. And I'll put the link to the above website in the description below. So, just to explain some of the theory behind this antenna, we're all familiar with. Uh, half wave dipole where each leg is a quarter of a wave and the impedance presented at the center is round about say 70 ohms that can vary with height now we can advance this by putting it on its side but here we're talking about a 5 8 wave antenna which gives us better uh, low angle radiation, so better for DX. So each leg is actually 5 sixteenths wave. Don't worry about these fractions, it doesn't matter. But the impedance of a 5 eighths wave is roughly uh, 200 ohms at the centre. So that presents us with a, with a matching problem for, for 50 ohm coax. Now, this design is a a sleeveless sleeve dipole which sounds a bit of a mouthful but effectively a sleeve dipole if you take a, a run of coax and there's one leg off the center and if we take another leg off the braid and run it down alongside that's called a sleeve dipole so you've got a quarter wave or in our case five sixteenths and a quarter wave there now a sleeveless sleeved dipole is effectively the same so center of the coax and we'll do this for the 5 8 so that's 5 16 you're actually using the braid of the coax for the other leg so under normal circumstances common mode currents would be our enemy uh, but the common mode currents coming down the outside of the coax are actually our friend this time because uh, if we terminate them in the right way down here, we end up with effectively a 5 8 wave antenna. And we just need to match that 200 ohms. So that's effectively the design of this antenna. So there are three additions to this design to make it usable. Uh, one is the addition of a capacitor at this junction here. Uh, and this is to help give the antenna a broadband uh, capability. So rather than a narrow SWR dip, it's a bit wider. And that's 8.6 picofarads. Now don't worry about this. That uh, is a capacitor made out of some quarks. So it's very simple. Uh, the other thing is we've got to contend with this uh, 200 ohm matching uh, issue. So effectively what we do is add on a matching stub down here. And that's uh, a small piece of coax. That's Westflex 103. The main antenna is made out of RG58. And the third addition to the antenna is we need a choke down here to effectively terminate the run of the antenna to stop common mode currents coming down the coax back to the shack and effectively define the length of the antenna here. Um, so capacitor, matching stub and chore. So there are three additions uh, to this 5 8 wave. So the gain master antenna of which this design is based is centered on the CP frequencies. So I've adjusted it uh, by a factor of 1.4% to center it on um, 28 and a half megahertz. Uh, so the SSB portion of the 10 meter band so this is your reference document to come back to in this video if you're building this antenna. So don't worry if this looks a bit scary to start with. It is really straightforward as you'll see in the, the following parts of the video. Um, so you can see the main run of the antenna is some RG58 uh, with a break in the middle to join on uh, the matching stub which is some West Flex 103. Up here is a capacitor, the broadband capacitor made out of the same run of RG58 and you can see in this detailed diagram here 
Uh, the braid is removed for two and a half centimetres and then there's 8.6 centimetres of normal coax. There's a little 0.6 centimetres, six millimetres of tip showing and then we solder the main insulated wire run to the braid of that tip. And I'll take a photograph of that area of this diagram and just show it next. So here you can see the centre point of the antenna is where that capacitor starts and we've got 3.335 metres that way and 3.335 metres that way. Small gap, two centimetre gap to solder on uh, this matching stub and I'll show that shortly in some photographs. And then on this end we have the choke so that defines the end of the antenna and we've got various choking options uh, which I'll explain shortly. So I tried an experiment on a coax capacitor and here you can see I've got a five centimetre section of RG58 and it measures roughly five or so picofarads. So that's how the capacitor works on the antenna. Now in terms of choke, there's a number of choices for this antenna and in terms of choke information, the best place to go is uh, Steve uh, G3TXQ's website. Steve's now a silent key. I've put the website link in the description below. Uh, you can see on Steve's diagrams how chokes uh, perform. There is a, a, an, Im an impedance aspect to a choke. That's the, the green, the darker the green, the better. Uh, and then there's a resistive aspect to a choke. So if it's green and with a black line, uh, that's a good performer uh, for the bands that you, you choose. And here we're looking for 10 metres, which is the, the right-hand side of this diagram. Uh, generally, uh, a correctly designed ferrite choke will always outperform an air choke. And looking at each of the three suitable ferrites in turn, Type 61 is the best. Uh, 12 turns of RG58 uh, gives a high degree of impedance and resistivity. And then comes 9 or 12 turns of RG58 on a Type 52 ferrite. You can see the similar performers here. And then comes Type 43, which is the ferrite I'm going to use because I've got one in the shack. It's still uh, a good choice. You can see here you like green, so still over 4,000 ohms impedance and it's resistive at 10 metres. So nine turns of RG58 on a 43. So if you are going for the airwound choke, a large WD40 can is 66 mil, so that's good for your 16 turns. And for information, that's three, five, eight centimetres of coax. And if you're going for nine turns on a ferrite, uh, as I am doing, that's about 72 centimetres of coax you're gonna need. So on with the build. Uh, this is the top end of the coax, the two and a half centimetre section of braid revealed, which we're cutting away neatly with side cutters, leaving the center in place. And here you can see the tip now uh, tinned on the braid, ready for connecting this insulated wire. Uh, join them together and use some shrink tube to keep both the tip and that join uh, weather protected. And here you can see the finished article with the capacitor uh, in place and that cut section on the left. So now for the bottom of the antenna, measure down from the base of the capacitor 126 centimetres for the cut for the join of the stub. Uh, and that leaves you with two bared off ends of RG58, which you need to tin up and prepare. Also prepare the end of some Westlex 103 and tin them up ready for connection. And because the Westlex 103 will be pointing down over, connect the tip to the top part of the antenna first, then add the bottom part of the RG58, uh, then insulate those cores together before you join the braids uh, and complete that join. So tape the 71 centimetre length of 103 next to the RG58 and remember to solder its end together. So just to summarise, I've laid the antenna all out. This is the top end with the insulated wire at the start. I think any old insulated wire will do. I've got the blue joining the brown, which is the main scale. And this is the centre point of the antenna, 3.335, which is the start of the full length of RG58 for the bottom. So this is the bared off coax, that's the two and a half centimetre gap, and this is the um, capacitor for wide banding. Uh, so here, that's the midpoint we can see, 
so it's 3.335 that way as well but so far down we come to the matching stub where the west flex joins uh, that's the top end of the rg58 there's the bottom end of the rg58 and as you saw the cores are joined and then the braids are joined there so this is a 71 centimeter piece of west flex 103 and the core and the braid have been soldered together so that's joined and then we continue down the rg58 to the bottom of the antenna which again is 3.335 which is the top of your coil so whether you've got an air wound coil or in this case a ferrite coil it starts at 3.335 meters and that's the uh, antenna all laid out so here we are outside ready to test the antenna i've attached it temporarily to my dx commander pole there's the choke so all that's antenna everything else is just feeder cracks the idea is to hang it uh, from that tree vertically uh, so we've come down to the analyzer and uh, this is the effectively the center of the dip at 28 and a half um, we keep getting glimpses of uh, 1.1 to 1 SWR uh, so this is uh, spot on so if we go down 1.2 so 1.3 just at the very bottom of the band and that's down into CB band 1.4 back up into 10 meters 1.2 going up to 1.3 about there so 29.3 1.3 so if we go up to FM calling uh, 29.6 or so it's 1.5 1.4 so that's fairly usable so if we go Dip. About there. 28 and a half, 1.2, 1.1. So that's uh, excellent. I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, that's just how I want it. You've probably already got the bits to make this antenna in your shack. Two bits of coax and a piece of wire for the air, air wound choke version. If you haven't, I think it costs about £5 in bits. If you go for the choke, that's about another six pounds. Uh, that's ninety six and a half percent cheaper than a brand new game master, at my reckoning. You can hang it from a tree, support it from a pole, uh, do what you fancy. Uh, I'm going to try it out now and see how it performs. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. There's other videos on the channel. I'm sure you like. Some are practical, and some are operational. Uh, Seventy three. Bye bye.